Hello, good evening. This is Nasir of Endeavor Africa. Today I'm going to take you through a time and attendance. The time and attendance is an application which is usually purely for attendance. It captures the daily in out for the people who are clocking in when they're coming in for in the, in the company and when they are going home in the evening. So under time and attendance, we have so many uh, variables which contain for the attendance. That is, we have system, masters, time and attendance, report, and help. Now, under system, I'm going to take you through all these things uh, within uh, the time that I've been stipulated. We have TSA. We have TSA. This is where we come and do the setting for uh, for this software depending on the requirement uh, for every uh, company or an employee or an employee to be applicable to his company. Now, under system settings, we have what we call global setting now under global setting we have time uh, ta cut of uh, ta cut of that depends on uh, uh, what is the your end month we have those people that the end month ends in 28th others 27th 25th others go end others go end month so it's you as in your company who make a decision in what is your cut off date so it is here that we come and set your cut off date if you have any one of it now we have what you call under overtime application we have overtime one and overtime two overtimes are used when an, an, an employee has worked for more than the required hours let's say per day you have to work for eight hours those extra hours that you get becomes overtime one and overtime two comes in when you work for weekly off and on a on a holidays. That is when uh, OT two comes in on this issue. So when you make them applicable, we'll have to click them to enable them to be active for 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 it to take effect to your to your application or to the payroll if you have any payroll integrated to the time and attendance. We have overtime three and overtime four. This one it's been attached with the payment and the deduct you and the deduct you're having. In this regard, this means that we are assuming that you are using our paymaster. Then it will be easier. It's you to tell us uh, which uh, uh, payment and the deduction you want us to attach the OT3 or OT4 so that it becomes easy when you're passing data to the payroll. The system automatically instead of you going there and editing manually those hours, the system computes automatically and uh, gives it to their payslip when they are viewing their payslip they realize that they realize there are certain allowances or bonuses that have been paid th those hours directly from the time and attendance. We have another setting called convert overtime one to overtime two. This is what it means here is that let's say you've worked on a holiday for 10 hours. Of course, we all understand that when you worked on a holiday, those all hours you earn them becomes overtime too. But the company can decide to change the overtime two into overtime one. This means that the system, the system compute its normal working hours, let's say eight hours. So it has to take its eight hours and the rest of the hours it will be given as overtime one now. Overtime one now. We have overtime one and overtime two. Then you have supervisor. Uh, two level author authorization and supervisor three level authorization for authorization you enable this application these two becomes invalid why it's because once this it means that you work in your normal work in your then those extra hours that you are earning to the uh, application or to the software somebody does change them manually and making them and making cable for you for example you have 10 hours of overtime the company can decide to pay you only three hours of overtime because the rest of the the rest of not resourceful to the company now that is where it comes to be authorization and a supervisor this means that it's level i just make a request that means i gave you three hours but somebody like an administrator has to authorize it to the Two or the third level of authorization. We have this uh, another setting called auto weekly off on seventh day. This setting means that the system automatically counts, let's say Monday to Monday is seven days. But now for your profiling, it checks that after seven days, automatically it awards you a weekly off. That it becomes, let's say, a rest day. And this one, it happened mostly in industrial companies or in hotels where people are having maybe one or two days to rest in in a week. Now, we have a call. We have user profile setting. Enable user profile setting. Once you enable this application, this means that 
you want an administrator an administrator to award right to a user or a supervisor or another person who is using this application this means that you can be having company uh, company uh, department a b and c and you want uh, person a to view uh, department c and not to view department d once you one thing you'll be denying other people rights to be viewing other people's details from other departments at a category and other designation we have another setting called enable password policy setting this is where you maybe want to strengthen your password maximum password length maximum password uh, length here you say maybe 10 12 depending on how you want password must meet complicity requirement you you have to say maybe allow blank password allow spaces at least one upper cases this is you are enforcing your password for this application for security purpose but this one we leave it to the choices of over uh, the company or the administrator or the person who is running the system to make it to be applicable account lockout policy you might say uh, after after 15 minutes let the software itself terminate or log out for the person who is using then that one automatically to enable password policy we have what to call for a force shift not a force shift this is maybe you have created as a, like five shifts and you want one shift not to be functioning first you have to enable this application here this setting then you go to those shifts you go to those shifts uh, able to to make it not to be functionable now we have another setting called calculating setting under calculation setting under calculation set, calculation general say, setting under it you'll see we have what we call ignore early arrival if you say ignore early arrival to the software if that any person who comes other, other than the time let the application ignore those hours that that uh, somebody has done what worked for the for the company this means in this regard that if my shift start at 8 and I was in the company at 5 a.m., those hours from 5 to 8, the, the, the application will ignore. But from 8 going onwards, the system will have to capture those records. Then we have what use employee was to ignore early arrivals. These are times we use to filter. We might uh, not want to ignore all other arrivals, but we want to do employee-wise. So first we have to enable this setting. Then you go to, to person's profile. You will find the same same setting there. You click, then you click there. It will be disabled. Now, under there, we also have another uh, setting called use shift wise to ignore early arrivals. Depending on the number of shifts that you are having uh, in your company, if it is five, if it is three, we can as well also use those shifts to ignore those, to ignore those faults depending with the company's requirement. We have what we call calculate total hours using a paired in paired out. This one we mostly mostly when we have like when you're having a, an, an e buy over Suprema where we want our system automatically to capture those uh, data from the hardware coming to the commerce uh, auto calculating and it 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 decide on pairing and it it says that this person has worked from eight. To evening so automatically the system will uh, will pay and give you those hours that you've worked for and you can even uh, pay, uh, pay it employee wise that means that it checks on my profile how many hours I've worked at the end of the day and it awards me the total hours for the for the day we have what you call uh, replace with the default holding processing mark presses we use this one uh, mostly because you see in our system when you are pairing and we are doing mapping this one it gives you a data accurately for let's say someone who has one who has eight and went home at five we have another people who will be maybe uh, uh, getting into another shift that start exactly from five so to avoid those to avoid any uh, disruptions and problems in terms of the hours we hold processes pending manually entries and automatically you'll be able to get, you'll be able to correctly consider working hours on compensatory off so mostly we put them under normal not under overtime one or overtime two we have another setting called ignore clocking clockings on a weekly off we maybe other people might say for security purpose but this means that maybe my weekly off is on a tuesday then i come and clock uh, uh, on the hardware once they process and download this data my, the system will ignore those clockings for me that means i'm supposed to be on my weekly off so it depends as well the 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 ignore clocking on a weekly off it can be done on employee wise or on a shift wise we have another setting called mark manual mark manual change date type 
now we have replaced with the default one or mark a as a set shift now this normally is when you have so many shifts in shifts we and sometimes a system is trying to map from a shift F to shift B, shift B to shift C, and as it shift comes in, when you see as it, when you see in, this means that you are not within those shifts being allocated. Maybe you've worked for more hours, maybe you've worked for less hours. So what we always do, we always untick that setting to make it to be applicable. We have another setting called calculate lost hours. Now, deduct deduct breaks from lost hours. Now, we have companies where they decided that we also want to monitor you are in when you are going for lunch and when you are coming out, let's say you have a lunch from 1 to 2. Now, we have to enable breaks. This means you will clock in when you are coming in and you will clock out when you are going out. But if you have one hour break for lunch and you've gone for more than one hour, we will have to come and enable this one to start deducting those hours. And we can deduct the lost, uh, the break hours from the lost hours or the normal working hours depending on the how you want it to be applicable. And it goes one on hand with this one that deduct lost hours from break overtime hours. hours that you've you've gone for lunch but you had worked exceeding some hours which are pending to the software which are applicable for which are overtime so again we can deduct loss hours from break overtime hours we have another setting that when you're clicking on this one down here you'll see offset hours with none total shift employee wise uh, depending on how you want this uh, the software to deduct those lost hours so but most of the time people say put it on none or put it on total shift that means it will check on the shift that have been allocated or employee daily working hours maybe it's, let's say you have eight hours and you have extra hours of one hour so the system automatically you will get one hour for our break so that one goes with the company requirement we have offset overtime hours with do not offset against worked hours again this one is a little bit controversial but it goes one in hand with offset lost hours with and hours with daily working hours but once you click on this one the system automatically go and check those hours that you've worked for from morning to evening let's say you've been, let's say you hours you have an extra hours or you you had to start your duty at 8 a.m but you came late for 15 minutes so those become 15 minutes become the lost hour so our some they lost. We'll try to look always to try to compensate its normal hours before awarding you that overtime or giving you a full worked worked day we have what you call ignore lost hours here we can ignore lost hours on a weekly off on a holiday or on a combined shift on a weekly off already we have explained it somewhere else that it means that you are trying either to clock on a, you when you are supposed to be on a weekly off on a wednesday then you come to the company you clock to the system the system will ignore your hours let's say it, today is a jamuhuri day and you come and clock automatically when you say on holiday you clock you you came to the company and you clocked in during the holiday time what the software will do it will ignore those hours on a combined shift we combine the shift mostly when you want mostly when you be overtime so we can as well decide that let's ignore those hours that you are getting through a combined shift offset lot offset overtime on a daily basis we are offsetting the lost hours with overtime let's say you are supposed to work for eight hours but you worked for 10 hours that means you have two hours extra hours but you're having a, a lost hours that means that you either you came late uh, during your working hours they, they, let's say 30 minutes uh, lost hours so what the system does it takes on your two hours takes the 30, the 30 minutes then you are left with one hour 30 minutes as you are over time we have what you call miscellaneous under miscellaneous setting this one uh, mostly we we use them but depending on the company requirement we have treat overtime as normal wise processing this means that per day you have to work for eight hours then you have an extra hours of one hour we can treat that over one hour to be a normal when you are processing the data we have an asset offset relaxation with late arrival earlier we have relaxation let's say that you've uh, your duty is supposed to start at eight exactly but the company decided the company does give every employee 10 minutes as a relaxation so the system will start computing the late hours from 10 15 15 use that 10 minutes 
to offset to the late arrival in earlier departure. So depending with how the company has set the, the relaxation, if it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then it will be okay with you. Count check shift hours. Depending uh, on the on the shift, how they have been allocated and how they have been created to the, the, the system. Now we can start counting the, those hours on the shift. That means that every shift has its different hours depending on how you are or how you've been allocated to the company so once you you click this one you are telling this uh, the software that the person a came at eight and went at home at three now can you count checking on the shift hours now it has to check from the various shifts that you've been allocated to the company to find out which one is proper for you to allocate it and the person got it and the person is able for you to the system Peak weekly off when employee is absent. Now, this becomes very uh, funny, but it's so nice, but it's so nice. Let's say today becomes my weekly off. And then, uh, now, and I did not come on duty. Now, the system will start trying to, will start try, instead of the system saying that uh, when an employee is absent or I'm absent, it automatically recover it with my weekly off. Also, instead of saying that I'm absent, my weekly off becomes as my representative to this software and mark it into my presence and I'll be either present or it will be a paid day for me. We have what you call another setting, late arrival deduction. This is becomes like where a company uh, comes and say number of lateness. We say three lateness, deduct days, deduct one day. So if you become late three days, we can decide let us deduct you a one full day. So you can also deduct it using hours, late deduction for hours. That means that you can say late hours, you put the hours, deduct a day, you say one as well or the hours you can as well yourself stipulated within the software so it becomes as a condition or as a rule that the company has passed we have what you call rounding or what you call round where mostly we use it in our units when we don't have to have uh, roundings in our units especially in overtime and in our work hours so it gives us a clear definition on what we want auto shift auto shift this is uh, a where the system there are two ways we have manual and auto shift when you are saying auto shift it means that a system automatically allocates employees shifts as per how they are clocking in and out that means that if you have five shifts and someone came from three to four the system automatically checks and run and picks a shift that that picks a shift and matching to the hours that you clocked in and out and you have a manual way when you uh, want to do it in a manual that means that you have to tick here and come and tick there once you tick there you are changing it from automatic to manual that means that you have to come uh, under time and attendance and shift scheduling and allocate those shift manually to the employee or the people that you are having we have another setting under auto shift that's called use the specific shift the big shift how oh, mostly this one is used where uh, a system has to decide uh, your in and out or the type of shift has to allocate to you once you enable uh, this setting this the, the the application checks through the number of shift that you've created to the software and it allocate a proper one to the employee or employees that you've created to the to the system you have what you call use holiday specific shifts this means apart from the normal uh, holiday that you are having we might be having other holiday in between the month, in between the year, and if you created the in your calendar or under our uh, under our masters, you will find that we have holiday set up. So you've created those holidays, and under still under shift, you can create uh, holiday shifts. So the system will check all those shifts that you've created as a holiday, and it will allocate correct hours to your employees. Use branch wise, department wise, category wise, designation wise. This one means that you want to do more filtration to, uh, to the shift to make it to look accurately when you are doing it to that one. Now, I'm going to another setting goal, to another setting goal to payroll. Now, this is very much uh, important mostly when you are, you, we are using our paymaster and you are passing your data from uh, our time and attendance to the payroll. Now, offset normal hours with minimal working hours. Already I have explained this setting somewhere else, but the, 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 the setting keeps on repeating because it depends on the functionality and how you want it to, to, uh, to help your company. Auto offset means that the system automatically offset 
normal hours with minimum working hours. What is your normal working hours? It's eight. What is your minimum working hours? Normal is eight. Uh, working is eight. So when the system checks automatically, if you have any disparity, the system will check. It will compare, and if it is okay, it does the correct mapping, and you you you, you get uh, your correct data when you are passing it to the payroll. Offset overtime one with normal working hours. This is mostly when we are doing off session. Mostly we find that people are having lost hours through uh, uh, the week or through the month, so month, so many overtimes. Then you have you are, uh, more normal hours. What the system does before passing that data to the payroll, it first check if you've achieved the normal working hours in this regard. The normal, the minimum working hours is 196, like you can check up here is 196. It becomes a condition and it's a rule that at the you have, that at the, to achieve 195 for you to, to get overtime one. So it means that if you worked for 195 hours, still you've not achieved, so the software will first uh, accomplish its mission by getting one hour from the overtime, making 196 and the rest of the hours, it will be given as overtime. Both applies to overtime one, over, overtime two. two. Reverse overtime off session. Still also this setting, I explained it somewhere else. Reversing means that changing overtime one to be overtime two or overtime two becoming overtime one depending with the requirement of a, a company and how they want the overtime to be treated in this application. We have to call lost hours deduction. How do you how to do your lost hours deduction? Depending, do you want the, the lost hours to be deducted or compensated on an overtime, on an overtime too, on a normal hours? Depend the normal hours. Every setting has its own functionality when you are making it applicable. So mostly we use this one when the, the by the company one is the company to themselves the the one who will decide if they want us to deduct the lost hours from overtime one or overtime two. Use compensatory hours. Compensatory hours. Compensatory hours. Let's say you have uh, other hours. Let's say um, you have lost hours of uh, at the end of the month. You have a lost hours of uh, 13 that hours. You can use those compensatory hours already allocated to the system because. Every system or company has its own computer. Let's say you have a computer hours of 25 hours, and at the end of the month you have a lost hours of, of 10 hours. So we just the system will first just pick the computer hours, take uh, the lost hours, deduct from there. Then the rest becomes overtime, and you get your payment. Past calculated absent hours based on date of joining or date of leaving. Past calculated absent hours. Now this means that. Uh, we have absent, we have lost hours and absent days. You did not work for two days, and you have lost hours maybe for three days. What does three days? What does will based on date of joining or date of leaving? But also this one goes in how you've been clocking to the system and how the system have been assigning your days at the end of the month. Both the system has to check through and make sure that it's achieving. But remember, the conditions remains that the system has to achieve 196 hours. That is a policy, but depending, we have those on working one and working one, we have those working 200, depending on how this is, uh, the company has decided those hours to be compensated. Consider holiday in normal working hours. Also, it's a repetitive setting because, but it has more of importance because this one, we are just considering your holiday. We are treating as a normal. It's a Jamuri day, you work for eight hours, you don't work for eight hours, we pay you as a normal working hours. The same is true, pay compensator of hours. Another setting here is a uh, number of overtime one and while one and number of overtime one one and two while passing data to the pair authorize work. Now this one goes with the authorization. I showed you under overtime one and over two authorizations. First you have to enable overtime one and overtime two authorization and therefore this setting will be applicable. Do not offset normal work with minimum work offset so the offset this one goes with hand in hand in how you worked at the end of the week, at the end of the month. Let's say you worked for thirty hours and you have uh, lost hours for five hours. How we want the system to to offset those lost hours, be it from the overtime, be it from the relaxation hour. So the system will check through the application depending on the setting that you've given it and it will be able to offset those hours. Pass only night shift hours in case of combined shift. Now this one goes with those industrial farm uh, companies where they're having so many shifts and those people who are working on a night shift. It was a nice for customization for another company. So the shift, uh, we have a combined shift but still you know you're having a combined shift but you're having a night shift. What the software does when you take this one, it concentrated on that night shift only for, let's say, from 
evening to morning. That is a night shift and it will award you those hours. Pass only certain percentage of time. Now that one goes hand in hand with authorizations because it's only the person who authorizes overtime is the one who has the power to give you let's say two hours three hours depending on how you've achieved those hours pass daily lateness deduction and units as absent yes we can decide also your lateness remember we have showed you how to do those lateness uh, rules there but we can now decide to pass those lateness rules but as an absent and then we deduct you one day two days depending with the company laws now we go to another setting. This one is leave setting. Uh, the, under leave settings and modules, you know, the, in, in time and attendance, so it captures the, the leave settings. So depending on the company's requirements, we'll be able to come here and gives you, depending with the functionality, what setting you want. But mostly we concentrate on leave days. On leave day, we are calculating our leaves. Depends on normal days, cut off date, date of day, depending on how you want to compute your you are leave this then reporting structure company customization company customize again goes in one in hand and how you understand to do we can decide maybe you're working for five hours on a saturday but you want to pay the eight hours we use that setting to do that one and uh, also we can also use another shift it's dogs man that means that those people working for two hours they rest for one hour go to work for two hours again they rest for one hour months for one hour then you can as well blacklist people they are using the nsf nhif national id depending on how you wanted to to filter them to this uh, system you can also ask customized reports using the customized name depending on the name of your company we do it there utility uh, this is uh, where we when you are here also is another setting that you come and let's say leave balance transfer forwarding to the other year over time one over time to depending on how you've been using your system you can as well also do a combination of it is integrating with the commerce if you are using any third party software you have also this system allows you to integrate with any other software hrms if it is there for you we can do that one now that is about setting. I'm going directly to something else, employee setting. Under employee setting, under employee settings, this is where we do calculations for hours. Now you select depending department wise, category wise, designations wise. You select by the employee. Then you have to come here and set those hours here. You say minimum working um, hours, minimum working hours, you also have to enable this one, this two check box. What is your minimum monthly working hours? Let's say per month someone is working for how many hours? Let's say 45 hours or 55 you have to put there. Minimum daily work you're working for eight hours, you have to put there. What is your Saturday working hours? Maybe you're working for five days or eight days as well. So we have to define it there. Rather than go, uh, going and doing to profit to one person at a time, so once you do it here and select the number of people you want it to be applicable, it's easier because once you do save, it will be applicable for all of them. Now under leave application, I'm just changing the module, changing the module. When we come here, this most of the times is that when you've created all the maternity leave, paternity leave, annual leave, sick leave, compensator, all those kinds of leave that we've created the system, we have to come here select the employees you can select on or you can unselect and select the and select the applicable select the type of a leave you want to be applicable for them if it's paternity maternity sick leave then say save now you'll be impending and you are attaching to their profile so that you can go to the software and make it to to be applicable for them day type assignment we use day type assignment mostly because you have we work from monday to Sunday, other people work from Sunday. So you can decide to treat Monday as normal, Tuesday as Wednesday. We can decide to be a weekly off. Sunday, we can be, it, it can be a holiday. Saturday, it can be your, your leave day. So depending on the requirements and how you want the system also to do on your side, we can do that one. It's easier for you. Remember, once you do it here, it will be applicable only for those people selected to this system or on this system now this team under something we also have letter settings you see the uh, also our, we we've gone hyper higher we've taken under time and attendance where we can do a we can do in and we put it to this software rather than each time you want to navigate uh, a notification a warning letter something related rather than each time you want to be going typing and typing and giving a notification we just set it once and for all type there the letter name report file name put it there it will be standard for everyone you will be selecting and making it to be applicable for the for the, uh, for the employees 
same to, to the leather body. Now I'm going direct to the user setup. Under user setup, this is where now we come and define how people are supposed to be uh, created on this so, uh, software. We have supervisor, we have admin, and so we have users. So uh, admin, administrator is someone who has more powers more than any other person. So you can see like in this system, I've created somebody like a user. So I can deny this, deny the user. You can use masters, system, and reports. And so that is a filtration and giving that profiling i've enabled profiling remember i taught you how to do user profiling so i can decide now let my user be viewing uh, other department and not viewing other departments so i can do filtration you see those that i'm unticking means that once i do save this person will be unable to view those data on that profiling name also also important to export, I can deny that person to do import and export. So the administrator who has the rights to do to allocate those on go to month. We used to go to month, especially month, especially on the current month that you are working on. And as well, it helps you to shift within the month previously. Let's say, okay, those months that you are seeing in, in bloom, that means they are already closed. But you can shift back, that means you just have to double click less to May, go to month, you find that the May is yes. Again, if I want, if I just double click the June by viewing and I make sure that it's working, then it becomes okay for you to navigate within the month. Setting processing period. Mostly this one, it happens for casual people. Those people who work, maybe they've been paid after one week, maybe after two weeks, maybe after three weeks, maybe after a month. So we have so, we, and, uh, and but that one we create under masters is where we come and get, we start by creating them, then we come there to make them applicable where you can just under masters when you say create a processing period. So when you say create a process, you can add and say I'm adding uh, another period, let's say another period let's two, which one? For a week, maybe for 24th. Once you do that one, you just say okay. First of all, I have to make sure that it's, it, it's not uh, collapsing with the one that is there. So I already have one for 19 to 21. So if I have to create another period, it has to start from, maybe from 22 going onwards. I can create now from 22, let's say, to 26. Then it adds there, then you close. You realize that you realize yourself there. Now when you go under system up there where you've been seeing it under system, set processing period now. I have now all uh, the powers to double click on one. Once you double click on one, you, you enable it to be yes. Like you can see here already, uh, the, th the second period is yes. That means the first and the third was and the third. The now, if I want to move to the uh, the third period, just double click it. Then I go there. You realize the other becomes no, no. This one becomes yes. that means that is a nine. That means that means I can still go back to the first period, double click it. I can check again and find that. The, the second and the third one are no, but the first one is yes. That's how we create the periods and that's how we activate them and deactivate the other one. We have uh, under the system, we have what we call import and export. Import and, ex import and export to, to the data. Let's say you have employees more than 10,000 and you are unable to create one by one to this system and you have them on an Excel to our software format. You can just directly import them to this software easily. What you only need to do is to import them. Just click on import, employee details, say next, details, say next. Browse your Excel to the destination where it, we, it is. Attach it. Select uh, the card issued date. Import it back. Import it back. Then it becomes easier for you. So automatically the system takes that detail to the table of a uh, table of uh, employees that is you are creating more employees or adding more employees exporting means you want to export that template outside then you will import it after maybe you've done your rectification uh, you've rectified some issues with it and it's okay with you now you can import it back to the system our system also have what we call audit trade. what we call audit trade to help us to capture maybe you're having issue we have some more high we're having more than 10 people logging into this system and someone ends up and mismatching the data that is in this is that is in this that be easier for us to track down that rec uh, to track down that record by checking under the audit trade uh, report because we've created every person with its 
credential of a username and a password and we, we believe it remains to be a confidence to, to the person who is running so under audit a report we can tell who went to the person a and change a certain data and we can check to the audit logo so uh, you can find some data out when me let's say you having records for let's say three years so we can punch other two years that means we are doing away with the two years so that the system is up and running actively and very fast we have you under utility also under utility we have backup restore store backup update database indexing licensing and backup that means that at least let's do a backup after two or three days the, so that maybe in case of anything it will be either it will be back and restore back to the system and it will be easier for us to restore and get the changes maybe if someone run the system and done some disparities in this in the software so for user verification always try to do a backup to this system changing user password maybe i've realized that you've already known my password so i want to change my password i'll put the old password and put other new password and confirm my password and that is the password i'll be using updating database mostly we use this update database when you're having small issues maybe you make a telephone call and you're getting a little error it becomes easier for us we only tell you go to utility update database and that error is gone that error is goes you close the time and attendance uh, not in a correct way maybe there was a little bit of a power breakage and, and our tables were interfaced so why inter so once you do database update database you are rectified but again we decided also to integrate what we call reindexing reindexing is much more of update database because maybe we some tables were altered badly so when you do re-indexing it turns those, uh, those tables to the normal and how they were initially so it will solve more problems more than updating database license registration we've gone uh, nowadays a little bit higher version where our license registration is being done online you don't need to be on your machine physically you only need just to come here register uh, yeah, your lessons online, remote sound, remote sound number, and the password, contact and email, then register. Automatically, it will be easier for you to run our software because it's easier to use it under process, put it under process, close periods. Now, remember we've created like three periods. Yeah, you can close period one, go to close period three. So, it becomes easier rather than navigating the way I was saying close uh, double click on one becomes yes other no you can come here and close the current period then goes to the other period close month always make sure that after running the payroll and the month has ended remember to close month don't go to month and navigate to another month like to month, like get month and i let's say someone wants to go to july just double click july and if you check down here already you are in july but remember if you go back to real june is still open because it's even because it's so remember to be coming under close month and close it successfully to become easy because it does its backup and it's easier for you to roll to the next month close here at the end of the year let's say now we are in 2017 we'll be going to 2018 that we do yearly just click on close here automatically it will shift to another period of 2018 i'm going to take you through another module called masters very fast under masters we have company setup under company setup this is where we come and create your company name and we attach it to the database they say the, what is the name of your server in this regard my server is sql server server name in this regard it's this one then what is your database name depending with how you understand name your database you can call it seo1 or the name of your company depending then the credit angel for in and it's for the username and password then we use mix mode that's how we attach our databases and it will be up and running other up and running so to make the beautify this software we've given an opportunity to put the pin nsf nhif the vat for for the company under banks also you uh, so you actually uh, when you've integrated our time and attendance with our payroll so once you put these details it becomes easy for you for for the purpose of the payroll and you want to do your i to do your nsf return your nhif returns put your bank details branch address down these things put all these small, small credentials then it will be easier for you to it will be easier for you to run this software successfully you can as well attach your company logo here if you're having a company logo you can maximize it and browse it attach it to this one save it becomes okay and fine uh, we have under masters remember this is where we create variables we create these, those things that you want to be workable on this uh, time and attendance now we go to the branches in this regard 
under edit record if i edit the record you see i have head office and another name the second name but second name you have to create more branches let's assume you want to come up with more branches just come under new here put another id list three and uh, you put another branch let's say you're opening another branch in kisumu just type kisumu and save it that's all about how adding a branch the same applies to the department you have to come up with that maybe you come to edit again you realize that you are searching for such a department is not there what do you do just close come type new put another department what is the department name it's you say maybe it or hr depending on what you the department name on how you want to define it to different name it, it will be okay the same applies to designation category under employees eh? I take you through the employees this is where we create i said if you have bulk of employees you can export it import export them on an excel but if you're having one or two employees you want to add them to this software it becomes easier for you just like for you just is payroll number of a person what is the name you put the name of the person there let's say nasir and uh, juma that's my name uh, what is the other name maybe you have all another name like mine like that one so you come here employee type our system captures for regular and casual casual capture those people are paid at the end of the month at the casual those people maybe you pay them on in a, on a period they say two weeks one week dependingly as uh, how the company wants to make a decision he wants to make a decision very important always put a date of joining because we when you're using leave module it can be on date of joining as well put your branch put your category put your department Put your designation male or female if for the person has a photograph browse the photograph put the photograph there if the person has a national id front and back browse put it there it captures both there there the details remember also since you are using it you are using it because remember this time an attendance it uses hardware maybe you have our how hardware maybe hand punch machine fingerprint supreme e-bio depending which hand punch or which hardware you are using we always use the clocking card details what is this clocking card detail? this ID card detail, this identifies you from the hardware and to it it does the mapping from the hardware to the commerce and to the time and remember if i'm having my number is 101 that is my clocking card number the other numbers are used for identity because the software has to capture 10 digits so what is important is 101 so you have to make sure that on your hardware you add one on one this 101 on the hard part be it in your fingerprint so it will be easier for me and for the software to do the mapping and give me my in out report correctly also somebody if he, someone is overtime applicable say overtime map say overtime overtime applicable doesn't take that one and leave it that way remember I taught you something up there on how to create these hours. You can as well come to someone's project. Maybe to someone's the people are working differently. We have those people working for 12 hours per day, 128 hours per month, two something hours per year. Related now you are working and now you are completing your hours. You can come under person's profile and say minimum monthly working hours. Maybe you are working for 43 hours per month. Uh, how many hours you are working per day maybe you're working for seven hours so you have to make sure that you put those seven hours how many hours you're working on saturday maybe you're working for five hours so you how you can go down and go into the individual people's profile and allocate those hours specifully other detail under other details here is maybe you want to put further other details yeah maybe further man, man, it, 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 click something here just for remembering the software also HR detail you can put your nationality here nationality you can put there for a first job title you can put it there you can also put you on hold if you don't want it to be shown on this software also under HR details remember we can give you PIN, NSF, NHF, ID numbers, reference and qualification you get them then it becomes even for us easier to do that insurance companies make sure that we only do this one if this software it has been integrated or you are using our payroll software so software becomes much easier for you to run 
and navigate your variables that you've created from time and attendance. Now we leave application already now I taught you how to do the how to do the applicable to people but remember you, you can as well have leave short name like I say annual leave full name annual leave opening balance maybe you have 23 days so when so maybe you have put someone in 32 days as an opening balance and say it same that person when you go to do leave application it will be applicable because he has that it was an opening balance so if I have to take three days of my leave days the system will give me and it becomes easier for me i've already also shown you how to do a day type assignment maybe monday to the wednesday to the wednesday and you want to apply weekly off maybe you want to apply for holidays just do that one save it that's how time and attendance works and how you create those people leave setup this way we come and do our leave setup uh, i've already done setups for annual leave and sick leave so you can check and see how we created having 21 days that means you're having 1.75 that means you can only go one leave per month if so but you can leave them to be accumulated so that's why we're having leave to be balance to be carried for our encashment means that you can convert your days into money that means if you're having five days you can calculate and pay you as cash you can pay or not pay depending on the company policy that's how we make it and set our leave so if you can set for monthly depending on how you want your leaves to be computing also it matters there so paternity leave maternity leave you can add it there and save them successfully war meanings letter i've already explained those letters there so you can set those letters also those letters and come up here remember i've shown you under system how we set, we set those standard letters there do the standard setup but remember you have to give us your format if you have your format give us in an excel let's uh, do it for you you will get it in the correct recommendation and you want it to get pass also get pass. get get those reasons here why someone should be passing through the gate but remember also i've shown you under the gate pass there this system can pull it rather than pull it rather than either typing it on an exit put it on once then print it at when someone wants to get out of your get you'll get a reason you'll get a reason going to buy something outside or is going to do to attend on a family issue outside holiday setup i've also also taught you how to set these ones it's very easy let's say today is the 19th and you it was a holiday what kind of a holiday maybe it is mashuja day so Mashuja day come and set it there so automatically those people who worked on Mashuja day it becomes overtime overtime too so the company will decide on how to use overtime too you can make it on overtime one or you can pass it as as on pass it as a shift definition shift definition this is where we create all kind of shifts let's say how many shifts that your company is having in this regard for this person they're having only this type of a shift so this is how we are setting them we say our your time start from eight to to four and relaxation remember we are talking about the relaxation this is where you set the relaxation so the system award this person has to work for eight hours we have break definition so you can come here and say what is your lunch time is from you go from one to two this is where we come and set those lunch break that's one now remember we are talking about the lunch break you can go for lunch late you come late so we enable this one but remember if you want to enable the break you have to come and say enable break range from this time to this time but with this time so we say break out break break out in range break hours 30 minutes so it means these people are going for lunch for 30 minutes you go past that one less than that one more than that one it becomes the issue because much issue because can start calculating and deducting you on your normal like working hour so we can create many many shift uh, in this system depending system the shift that you have you can combine your shift you can put in a special so virtual shift depending on how you want your shift to appear we can do it for you peaceful and how you want it to be applicable be it monday to saturday monday to wednesday monday to thursday we do that and save it for you it becomes easier to use actually time and attendance is one of the best is one of the we are having it's easy it's user friendly because there's a click and it happens for you create pressing period i've already taught you this way we come and create those periods especially for the casual people i told you casual people are those people who are paid in periods maybe one week two weeks three weeks four weeks so come here define the period you say one week that is define that week how your week is going come add here save it make it applicable under a set processing period yes or no then it will be applicable for you these two fields we leave them for customization 
maybe you've exhausted department branches designation and category you can come down here and come down here. we have extra two fields which are used maybe for customization it becomes easier for you i'm moving to time and attendance now here because now shift management schedule mostly here remember i told you the system has two type uh, on how to allocate shift that's automatic or manual now for the manual entry you have to come here click department wise maybe let's say a department like come and say this department called uh, uh, bees hobbies just come here select if there are all of them come and, and double click on any field here uh, allocate the type of a shift you want to give the let's say is a, if there's a general shift it's applicable from either saturday no monday it's either monday you can untick those days that you want that uh, shift not to be applicable select the date double click now double click here select the shift let's say it is general shift general shift general shift so it is you just to allocate now you are doing it manually this means you are doing manually for for those people but remember you've said sunday so you make sure that you don't tick anything on a sunday and you don't tick anything on a saturday it remains to be that way maybe on a saturday is a weekly off you can just or a sunday is a weekly off just come here do it once uh, this is a weekly off this is a weekly off this is a weekly off once you do that one just say apply you see the system automatically now applies those shift manually and they say okay that's all about doing shift management manually allocating the shift manually to the people so i can do that or not i can use as well clear if i don't want to use those shift i can just clear those shift for me because my system use auto shift i don't want to interfere with it i can clear it and remove those shift that i have allocated to to these people so once i do the clear i'm okay i'm okay Move on. now i'm moving into something else But that's all about time and attendance. Most of the things that I, I, I've told you, it's all about the time and attendance. It's an easy application to use it and it's very user friendly. Once you use it, you'll never regret of having it because it's so friendly to any person who has ever, ever used it or use it, with it on now in an office because it is applicable everywhere. You can use it in your office, use it in your office. You can use it even at home because it controls so many things. We can control even our doors for access control. The time and attendance also works. And also works. is one of the best applications that we are having. And I believe we are, we are the best company here in Kenya that we are having best time and attendance because it's user friendly and you can customize any kind of report that you are having for your company. And you and of having it so as i was saying i just logging in we got some interferences moving very fast now very fast i was under time and attendance i was showing you how to do shift my that's how we do overtime authorization authorized over i told you how to do overtime authorizations but remember under system settings you have to go there tick overtime one overtime two authorizations once you do that one then under overtime authorization this is where we come and do authorization for the hours building for the hours people or regular people or you want to authorize overtime one of overtime two so you just have to come here put the dates that you want it to uh, authorize uh, hours maybe let's say what hours you remember you have to enforce everything tick everything to be applicable put the hours that you want to authorize in this regard you know me i don't have any any data here but i can say i can deny you i say i want to authorize only two hours for 
who and who for this remember for the casual because after the casual for this period i say for this period i want to pay everyone two hours i authorize the two hours and they'll be paid those two hours but i got two hours but then the, any person depending on how you've been achieving your overtime process tier data remember each time you download data from our core master you have to do processing 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 means that it will be able and it does the mapping for you when you're going to do your reports it will now is like running a whole system processing is running the system fully now to checking and coming on your reports or like say on a daily in out report and you want to see if what time i came in and what time i went at home so always remember to be processing time and attendance one once a while at least for any changes that you do to the system you have to do processing attendance register this is where we come and check maybe for regular or casual we just want to see how you've been working maybe you have a complaint someone says that i've been awarded less hours i've been awarded more hours so under attendance it becomes even more easier for us here we just come select the person we want the person we want there we achieve what we want if there is any problem with, with that one it becomes easier from our end to check it and rectify the issue or rectify the issue are facing and automatically we award you or you get those hours in this regard you can see we come here and say you see what it did it gives you the date uh, uh, shift, shift type day type in out break so all these things we check under attendance if you're having any inquiry or any problem you can even you can go and uh, undergo an uh, accent check how you've been clocking in and out so it becomes easier for you to work with time and attendance out session visit remember this one now goes hand in hand if you've set it under masters maybe you want to check on the report same to get passive we talk about the get and the compensatory hours this we of the this of the get hours and how you want us to set the compensatory hours for the people maybe two hours 12 hours depending on how the company policy we have to come here process it give the department was categories designation was on how you want it to appear we just come and put it there and it becomes if it becomes it. and remember when you are doing on the setting on a uh, offset a uh, lost hours the compensatory hours you have to set it to this system to make it be applicable applicable it will be easier for you to navigate warning hours deduction remember under rules where we are saying three letters deduct one day it is important for the company maybe them they know how they are deducting those so we can come and give warning hours deductions here it will be easy for you passing data to payroll this is very important especially when we haven't integrated this time and attendance with our payroll system passing data to payroll means after we've checked everything that it's okay and at the end of the month the reports are okay and the hours allocated to the people are okay we are fully passing those hours from time and attendance to the payroll for the system to do the payment remember for the time and attendance we only pass overtime hours not hours because automatically for the regular the system knows that the system knows that. so we pass the lost hours it's absent and lost hours and overtime zone that we are passing it to the to the software clocking card management this is where we create the cards remember for the new people for the first company that is using the time and attendance we have to create the cards meaning we have to create the clocking card numbers the numbers that you are using to clock on the hardware, be it the fingerprint, be it the hand punch, be it the Suprema, be it the EBA, be it the RFID cards has to be created on this system. Remember, if you're using a card, a card has 10 digits. Let's say you have to make sure that you've created those 10 digits to this system. So you can create one by one by doing that one. If people are using numbers, let's say somebody is having a payroll number, having a payroll number, number is 12. I have to put how many zero eight zero one two three four five six seven eight and twelve my clocking card number. Yeah, I can give it even in a range. Maybe people are from one or twelve to thirty. So I'll have to change the last figure maybe to fifty six and do uh, submit for authorization. That means it will be ready to be used for authorizing or mapping it to their profile under clocking card numbers. Now we have under card management. Under card management, change card, return card, assign card. Change card happens when you I realize that you gave me a wrong card and mine you gave me three instead of one. You can change card, return card. Mostly we do return card for the people who are leaving the company. So we have to return our card, assign new card. We assign new cards to the people who are joining the company. So what do you do? We just select you, your name, 
give you the new card make it applicable make it applicable assigning cards to the system leave management this is a very interesting module remember our time and also mm -hmm. has, a, has a, a module called leave management but remember if your company has more of leave management where you want to do online uh, leave management that one we will give you another module for human resource management for leave modules that is more than this one where you can apply your leave online so for it and so for the standalone you just have to do it here under leave application remember i told you where we set the people you select the person whom you leave whom you the leave application select the kind of a leave you want apply the days from which date to which date already you can check down here had run so many leave application and this person you see has like how many days 27 more days so that tells me i can still apply for him so for so many leaves that means the last leave i applied for him for annual leave you can check it is there so i can still apply for him another leave maybe from 20th to to 30 depending on how you want that leave to be applicable then do what then save it that's how we do leave application leave encashment also this system allows you to do leave encashment remember leave encashment is where you you are now cashing in your your remaining days in this regard for my person he has 27 days you can say that you want to cash in 10 days just say cash in save it it will deduct 10 days from here i remain with 17 days that's all about doing a leave encashment you can so also do encashment do encashment so we do in a bulk way where people are so many rather than doing an on one entry at a time come here select your people all of them will come there then in this regard on my system i only did for one person so if you have bulk of them they'll appear onto this interface and you'll be able to apply once for all maybe it's five days for all of them or it's three days for all of them becomes easier for you to do that management <sighs> else now under reports because other things i already taught you have attendance reports under attendance reports remember now at the end of the day of time and attendance you need to check the reports report is what it defines every software because it tells you more on what you want to achieve now if you can our report you can do filtration branch wise branch filter wise, category wise designation wise let's say my branch i want to check on this branch just select the branch you want to check in now who are the people you want to check you can to check you can say i want to check for a person lesson number 10. that wise you can say today and today today and today assuming you have that attendance what time of rep uh, report you want to check maybe it's a daily in out report remember daily in out report is a report that shows you how someone has come in come in and out at the end of the day so you come there do a preview the system will be able to show you but remember if I'm having my for this one I haven't integrated with any hardware but if you have integrated with the hardware and you've downloaded that data from the other end it you will see from your daily in out report how someone came in and went out at the end of the day so the report when it comes out it will be filling in in out in out in out in out this is how it, it should look like as much as it's a scale of it employee name the name of our employee the company employee the company in out in out in out that means that you might have so many it's and so many out but remember time and attendance only has only two rules it takes only the first in and the last out unless you've enabled the breaks that's how it comes to be applicable with so many we have so many reports here so if you really so if you read some reports that are here that are not uh, satisfying your your heart or your way you can come and give us maybe you have your report that you are using on your excel that it's not in this one we can customize it and give it to you and it will be looking nice for you because we as you said we are ready to work with you we are ready to give you any kind of a report that you want to make sure that at the end of the day you've achieved the what you want under leaves also under leaves the reports for leaves are here if you realize also that you you've checked for your leave and you've shown that this is the, the kind of a leave that is the report that has been shown here for you it's not good for you don't feel bad give us your format we will customize it for you and you'll be able for example you see for my person for my leave Frederick annual leave 
that's 27 days taken 11 accumulated 27 26 days so it goes like that and we have so many types of leave reports that are here if you realize that the report that you want is not here give us your format the type of our report and we'll give it to you same to the warning same to employee same to budget so that's so much stuff lifting report all these reports are here so we will always give you the kinds of reports you want at the end of the day also we have user rights reports yeah we've been allocating your rights you can preview and print those reports for you audit reports maybe someone messed up with the system and you want to know who is the person who was the last person to use the system that's how we come and get hold of you and we get you uh, from where you were hidden yourself and we can jail you if the company decide to jail the company decide anyway that's all about the audit reports from there you can check other version our version is always to the latest we'll always give you a best version of our software we always update all of our clients when you give them then log out then exit the software that's all about time and then good evening